Good afternoon. Thank you to be here. I want a special thank to the directors of, the, of this workshop, Eric Canessa, Carlo Fonda, and Marco Zennaro. The topic of today is uh, 3D printed anatomic replies for medical and educational purposes in dental surgery. The idea is to give some practical projects from a sustainable development point of view. My name is Paolo Rossi, I am a doctor in dental surgery and I have my private office here in Trieste. I'm also working for many years with uh, an, an Italian NGO which is uh, International Dental Cooperation and with the European Centre for Intercultural Training in Oral Health. The mission of the COI, this is the name of the association in Italy, is to promote health in disadvantaged communities all over the world. The way to obtain this is sending experts to evaluate, help and support local medical and dental staffs, offering continuing education programs and installing dental clinics and supporting them with the surgical, prosthetical and dental materials. What's about the HITO? It's quite the same, to promote and manage low-cost continuing educational courses for, for the practitioners uh, in developing countries. Apologize me because my English is so poor. <laughs> I hope you can understand me. <laughs> the way to do it is organizing post-graduated courses in cooperation with the Dental School of Turing University in Italy, suggesting simple and cost-effective techniques, evidence-based therapies and low-cost materials to be used in training dental staffs in developing countries. Where do we work? Here we are in Eritrea, near the South Sudan border, this is the TSNA hospital, oh sorry, this is the Italian hospital near the South Sudan border, and this is Masawa. Here we are in Mogolo, near the Ethiopian border. This is the Beka Valley in Lebanon, near the Syria border, and this is Shatila in Beirut. Rashidi in the south of Lebanon, near the Israeli continent. Amazonia, Brazil. Serbia, Kragujevac. This is my staff operating in Bosnia Herzegovina. Here we are in Mostar and Sarajevo. Here I am working with uh, the KUAM, Doctors with Africa, in Woliso, Ethiopia. This is the last of our projects in Kenya with the support of the uh, ECTP Fund for Anger. Thanks for this. <laughs> and uh, this is my mobile clinic to visit the child. And that is me trying to remove an upper molar from a jaw skull of an elephant, but I was not able to do it. <laughs> oh, I was forgetting the Mali, the last one. We are in Mopti and in the prison of Kutiala working. But come to the topic of today. The modern digital radiology using cone beam computerized tomography, CBCT, allows us to provide three dimensional images of entire volumes of bone or tissue without absorbed doses of radiation, which are similar to those of, of an old two dimensional radiography, which means about 70% less than a traditional CT. Or if you prefer to use a nuclear magnetic resonance, which is little bit more expensive, we can also obtain details of soft and dark tissue without the use of X-rays. So the technique we propose today is a system that allows us the construction of anatomical replies in the form of a medical model through the use of the 3D printers normally found on the market at a reasonable price. The colleague before me shows some very beautiful realization, but with professional 3D printers, which are very, very expensive. We usually use them in oral surgery, for example, but it costs really very much for us. So the aim is to ensure access to a technique already in use in oral surgery, but till now reserved to limited numbers of cases for its high cost. So these cheaper models can be used for didactical purposes, for the training and the communication with the patient, and also among operators. Now, I leave the chapter to my young colleague, which is an architect, <laughs> Dr. Campana. Thanks. Please. Uh, good 
Presentation, uh, and the Campana, I work in a radio diagnostic uh, center. And uh, uh, today I would like uh, to tell you something about uh, uh, what uh, me and my team have done uh, during the last uh, <coughs> year uh, about the use of uh, the 3D printing. And um, I start uh, to tell you something about uh, the work. And um, we are a radio diagnostic center specialized in. Um, specializing in, uh, in, in uh, radio diagnostic for uh, dentistry. And uh, normally, in my work, there are patients with uh, diseased and uh, uh, that uh, normally goes uh, to a dentist for a visit. And uh, what happens uh, when uh, the dentist uh, don't find a uh, uh, solution of uh, the problem, can uh, Ask Don't worry. <coughs> you can ask uh, uh, at uh, our center uh, to have uh, some uh, imaging for uh, find uh, the solution of the problem. This kind uh, of uh, feedback made uh, a cooperation. The cooperation is uh, an interesting thing because uh, um, cooperation, uh, for example, uh, for a very simple example, is um, like uh, the dentist who call us, uh, uh, give me an image more dark and or more uh, um, more contrast contrastated because uh, the dentist would uh, see uh, better the disease. And uh, um, so the cooperation uh, between uh, the dentist and the, the radiologist uh, made a good uh, radiodiagnostic image. Um, normally, uh, in the simple cases, there are two dimensional exams like uh, panoramics or uh, teleradiography or uh, multiplanar imaging um, that are made with uh, CBCT, Combined uh, Computer Tomographic, with, uh, for the complex, uh, complex cases. And um, that uh, is uh, the important thing that uh, we do uh, lately. And uh, uh, we focus on, uh, um, on the three-dimensional imaging because uh, the three-dimensional imaging uh, became uh, very important uh, for uh, the, the dentist <coughs> because it is uh, a good way to explain the disease to the patient. Um, in fact, <coughs> uh, the last, uh, before the last year, uh, I, I have a lot of required of a 3D uh, image. And uh, so uh, our uh, radio diagnostic center can uh, try to ask with uh, some image like that, like that, or uh, like this. Um, uh, all uh, these things made a question. Uh, how can we improve uh, three-dimensional radio diagnostic imaging that became so, so important uh, uh, for uh, dentistry, in my case? Um, we try uh, to ask uh, the question with uh, the, tre the 3D printing and uh, we have some results, we start uh, from the results and we hope to uh, have uh, good results, so we are invited to go on. And um, now uh, we have uh, a question, how to improve uh, the three-dimensional uh, imaging. Uh, and uh, we have an idea to solve uh, this question, the 3D, the 3D printing. And now started uh, some problems, uh, how we made uh, 3D anatomic uh, replicas. The first problem is, uh, so was uh, um, choose the, uh, the right 3D printer, um, because uh, we have uh, two ways. The first way is, uh, was uh, an expensive ways, uh, ways with uh, mm, 
uh, expensive technology like laser technology with uh, uh, dust uh, uh, different materials and uh, or the other way uh, was uh, uh, to choose uh, low cost technology low cost technologies but, uh, but um, acceptable uh, with acceptable quality uh, low cost uh, because we would like to improve the, the diagnostic image but we would increase the cost of, uh, of the, the exams for the patient we decided to buy a thermoplastic uh, ABS 3D printer um, now there are the second problem and uh, don't uh, go the movie so uh, not go okay I'm sorry but uh, the movie don't go so, so you have to image um, in, uh, in, um, in medicine uh, three dimensional uh, data um, are composed by, by a lot of sequence of uh, image a single image is uh, a two dimensional uh, image and um, uh, so uh, the volume is composed by a lot of, uh, of, uh, la of layers and uh, they aren't really three dimensional so uh, we have to start a process to uh, transform the CT data into uh, the 3D uh, replies. Uh, this process called uh, reverse engineering is a, a process uh, um, that goes from a real model, the patient, to a real anatomic replica um, passed through the CT data. I try to divide uh, the concept of uh, the, um, the reverse engineering into three steps. The, the first step is uh, the concept of thickness because uh, the volume of the data are composed of, uh, about a lot of uh, axial, a lot of uh, DICOM image in uh, medicine, uh, characterized by a thickness. A thickness um, is a value that uh, you can uh, choose when you export uh, from uh, the, C the CT software to uh, DICOM uh, package um, and uh, is important because uh, when you choose uh, the thickness uh, you characterize your uh, 3D, mo uh, 3D model and uh, mm, a little thickness uh, could uh, um, co could be done a lot of uh, axials and uh, a lot of axials uh, can uh, can't do the right uh, thing because uh, the number of axial can uh, is um, can be more than the layer of the printer you have to choose uh, you have to choose a, a night thickness because the height thickness uh, made less axials and less uh, details. So what is uh, the, the value of thickness? It depends on uh, the CT data because uh, uh, every CT made uh, different DICOM, every CT made uh, different gray uh, range uh, where uh, it works. Mm, uh, in our work uh, with uh, normally CT, uh, we use uh, a value from uh, 0 0.3 uh, to 0 0.5 uh, um, millimeters of uh, dimension of singular axials. The second uh, step that I divide the process is uh, the segmentation and uh, the thresholding. Segmentation is uh, a process uh, we, that uh, connects the gray level with the anatomic tissue. In fact, when you analyze uh, <coughs> the, um, 
the, the structure in the image, uh, uh, the anatomic structure in the image, the, in the DICOM axial, you uh, have uh, uh, this kind of, uh, of graphic and uh, you have uh, two peaks, uh, this one and this one, that are the cortical bone, uh, uh, the vestibular cortical bone and the, li and the lingual cortical bone in our case in dentistry. Um, and uh, from uh, the peak to the other peak you have the range of uh, the gray that uh, uh, connected, that can be connected with uh, the, uh, the anatomic uh, tissue. Then, when you finish uh, at first the analysis with uh, segmentation, you can uh, threshold uh, the selection of, of uh, gray levels. You um, have to, um, to think about uh, you want that you want in the replicas because uh, in this uh, pass um, uh, you can select also a lot of uh, gray out of uh, the, the structure that you want to reply. And um, so uh, when you finish the first thresholding, uh, you have uh, um, you generate a 3D, uh, 3D meshes, but uh, they aren't uh, a good uh, uh, 3D model because uh, there are a lot of uh, scattering that is made because in the months there are uh, there are a lot of material like metals or uh, or odontoiatric material that have the same gray uh, value of uh, the bone of, uh, or of uh, the structure of uh, uh, of the teeth. So uh, the last uh, pass is to clean all the scattering to make the, the file ready for printing. Um, with the segmentation you can um, select only teeth or only mandibular nerve or uh, or, as, as, uh, or the bone with the teeth. Mm, you have two, cho two choices uh, be, uh, based in, in um, that you want to reply. There are some um, examples. This one is a, a particular example because we are made the model from, from uh, a magnetic resonance imaging and uh, it represented uh, the soft tissue uh, opposite of uh, the others uh, that represent uh, hard tissue and um, this kind of model uh, is too difficult because uh, uh, here you have uh, only uh, a, a gray uh, value range to select uh, to do the, um, the replicas and uh, here you have uh, all the other uh, gray level and uh, the problem uh, is uh, um, made some difference between the tissue are uh, near the other tissue. Um, um, very quickly, I would like to see you some clinical case, two cases. Uh, the first one is uh, typical, is uh, usual and uh, is a native uh, TINF study. Uh, this is uh, the panoramic, um, they are a TINF uh, TIF. Uh, uh, they aren't uh, in a good position. <laughs> and um, what uh, we uh, try to do, we try to make some uh, uh, replicas uh, for improving three-dimensional Im imaging. That was uh, the question that we have at uh, the beginning. And uh, with uh, 3D, uh, 3D replicas, um, the dentist can have in uh, his hands uh, the problem and can uh, explain the problem to the patient. And uh, it's easier to the patient uh, is uh, uh, are, uh, agree with uh, the clinical solution. <laughs>
The other uh, case is a big uh, cystic osteolytic. This is a very impressive uh, case. And um, uh, this is the problem, a big cystic. Uh, in this case, uh, we would like to give uh, to the, um, the, the dentist a model, uh, a double model. Uh, divided into a complete model and uh, a slices uh, across model where he can look inside the problem and uh, he look uh, the external. Uh, all of that um, pardon, uh, image, um, 3D image, we made that before uh, the, the, uh, the, the dentist open uh, the patient for, uh, go in, uh, for uh, view inside. And uh, that's uh, at all. And okay. I'm a dentist, and you know the dentists are not so cheap. So, <laughs> for a dentist, this one in Italy nowadays it costs about five hundred dollars. It's no low-cost technologies, <laughs> but nowadays we are able to do it uh, with uh, less than one dollar sometimes, from one to twenty-five dollars. It's completely different. So it's my everyday job. One of these cases I have operated this morning in my, in my clinic. So there is the possibility to develop this. Oh, where we are, using the 3D replies for the didactic program of the intervention. So this little boy, two years and a half old, is coming from Kitengela, it's near Nairobi. And he has a very big osteolytic process in uh, the upper jaw, in the maxillary bone. And it has been operated uh, a few months ago in the Yomo Kenyatta Hospital in Nairobi. The anatomical replication allows the surgeon not only to study and design the operation to perform, but also to simulate all surgery phases. For example, starting from the model, we can simplify the reconstruction of the atrophies by modeling already in the extraoral environment, pieces of homologous or heterologous bone with the utmost precision. This is Karim. This young lady is, uh, is uh, Masai and they have no in their feeding uh, uh, folic acid because they, they move continually. No, they are not agriculture. So the folic acid lack causes labiopalatal schisis, the lack of the bone in the maxilla. And this is a big problem because this little lady is not able to suck the breast of her mother, the microneuron, and <laughs> he can die if we don't do anything. So, at the same time, we can simulate the placement of a, a dental implant, evaluate evaluating before the morphology of the bone, the position of the mandibular and lingual nerve, and all the sensitive region. For example, this is the mandibular nerve. If I touch it, you lose your sensitivity in half your face. But I have to put an implant here. So I have to go there. I have a stop here sometimes, but sometimes I can't use that. We can also design a surgical stent to maintain the right angle and position of our drill to avoid contact with sensible areas. These stents can be accomplished with extreme simplicity by the same 3D printers with a couple of dollars. And if I decided that I need more accuracy, I can ask my trust laboratory to give me one by a 3D professional printer, but it costs $500 to me and to the patient. So I can angulate my drill to 
not to touch the nerve and to use all the bone I need. You have yet seen these images. If I have to remove these teeth, I get some information from, from two-dimensional dichrome medical imaging. But I want more. So I ask a CT and I get more information. But it's not easy to understand for me sometimes and it's very difficult for the patient or for the surgeon I have to teach to do it. So I can use this. So it's very clear. I can see the position of the nerve, the position of the teeth and the root, and I can see, for example, that here the root is protecting the nerve. So the right size to, to, for the surgical approach is from the labial, the buccal size, not from the lingual. Because here I have another nerve, the lingual nerve. So I can try to choose the right instrument. This is a contra-angle with a, a drill. I choose the drill. It's different from this. Here I need that the patient open his mouth more and more because another angulation of, of my drilling machine. I can decide to cut the teeth here and remove this little piece and then move the teeth toward the seven, toward the other teeth and not in the wrong direction. Or I decide to use this and to cut the two roots and separate them and to move before this one and that the other one. When I go abroad, I use these replicas because they are not expensive for uh, teaching to my colleagues. It's easier to explain a quite complex technique like the anesthesia of mandibular nerve if you can use directly your fingers and see and touch the exact place where you have to put the top of your needle, avoiding uh, dangerous areas. This is the same concept on the other side. Or for the anesthesia, it's the mental foramen. Sometimes you can use the I, I use the 3D replies for didactic uh, in conservative therapy. I asked to my pupil to prepare the teeth decayed and then to use the dental rubber dam to isolate the theater of operation and then to use dental floss and wedges and, and fill the teeth with uh, amalgam silver restoration or with uh, composite restoration, the white one. In periodontology, I can teach the, the colleague to reach the tartarus, the calculus, in a deep pocket, or to choose simply, most simply, the right forceps to remove a lower premolar. So, in conclusion, the use of anatomic replies allows us an improved communication between the operator and the patient, and also between among the operators. This is particularly important in situations of different environment and cultural approach, as it often happens teaching or working with other teams in different geographical areas. This means also to be able to obtain a significantly reduction of surgical time, discomfort for the patient, and risk of complication. The extra oral design in the simulation environment, in fact, allows us to define an exact checklist of the necessary materials and biomaterials, membranes, implants, screw, pins, surgical instruments, etc., etc. It can be very useful, not only for the teaching of complex cases, but also every day for the operator's basic training of the conservative periodontal and extractive therapy. The new frontier is to build using polylactic acid, which is a biomaterial. It is completely resorbable, and you can decide the time you want with the resorption, to build spare parts of the body. Before you remove a part, for example, that big case, you can, using uh, reverse engineering, a new spare part of your body. And then you can use it as a scaffold for a team cell, for stamina cell, or something else. But it's very beautiful because it costs less than 20 euros. The first case I remember was 10 years ago. And with the University of Piacenza in Italy, they spent 
something like fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand dollars for one rebuild. Yeah, ten years more than ten years ago. Now it's nothing. Like the cell phone. <laughs> so at least I want to thank ECTP Fund for Anger for helping our efforts. This is Urafiki Medical Center. He is in, it is in Kitengela near Nairobi. And uh, it was opened last year with the joint effort of my association, the COI, of the Urafiki Medical Foundation, and uh, with uh, the contribute of uh, ECTP. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.